boys and girls. Today I'm going to be just doing a quick um, little art project. I have here a watercolor paper. It's a small watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, then you can use, um, you can tear a sheet out of white paper from your art journal or find another sheet of white. And then I have this black pen. It's a Pilot G2. I got these at the dollar store. Um, any type of black pen, if you find a black pen at home, I would prefer you use a black pen. If not, then you can use a pencil. All right, so I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna be just drawing random geometric shapes. I'm trying not to really overthink it. This is more of a br right brain activity. I'm gonna be just making Trying to make them not too straight because I'm not going to use a ruler. But um, for this one, I'm not going to do any curves. So I'm just doing like rectangles or squares, inside squares, just kind of linear shapes. Please don't try to copy mine. I want you to just randomly, that means draw whatever you want, like straight lines, however you want to draw them, but you don't need to copy mine. I am not really thinking about this as I'm doing it. I am just doing random shapes, and I'll show you in a second what we're going to do with this. I think it'll be too hard if you try to copy my exact pattern, and the whole point is for you to just kind of let your mind go a little bit and just draw different shapes. All right, I'm gonna put this one aside. I'm gonna show you one that I already did. And I'm gonna get another sheet to do another one. So I had this small watercolor pad that I bought at Michael's a while back ago. I like to use these, not really to create actual watercolors, but to create a palette when I'm practicing. So I'm gonna just use that. I'm going to do another one. If you only have one sheet, then just you, you only have to do one. So I think this one, I'm going to do it like this. Now I haven't really tested this pen out, so I don't know if it's going to be permanent because I'm going to add watercolors to it in a bit. So that way the ink on the other ones can dry a little bit. This one kind of looks more like buildings, or it did anyway. So just once again, random shapes. Maybe I'll put a dime, uh, not a diamond, a triangle. Oh, Miss Noelia, you're forgetting your shapes. Some triangles. All right, good enough. All right, so now I have my watercolor set. Fifth and sixth grade should have their watercolor set and I have some water, it's already dirty because I was using it earlier today. And I have my watercolor brush. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I usually keep this little spritz bottle and I, it's a little bottle filled with water and I spray my watercolors and if you've done a watercolor class with me before you know that I do this to activate the colors all right and I'm going to paint the insides of the squares I think I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I should change my water so let me go change my water all right <clears throat> I cleaned out my water and I'm going to do harmonious colors so that means I'm just gonna stay within the colors that are like next to each other on the color wheel so I think I'm gonna start with some purple and I'm just gonna paint some of these purple
Now, depending on what paper you use, you have to be careful that you don't put too much water on it. All right, I'm gonna change my color and I'm gonna go to pink. I have pink on mine. You don't have pink, but you know that you can make pink with your watercolors by using, um, actually that's not pink, I picked the wrong color. You can make pink on yours by using like a light red. You do have red watercolor, so you can just water it to make it look pink instead of red. So if you notice, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to color within each square or shape a different tone and a different color. It's okay if you go outside the lines. This is kind of like an abstract piece anyway. If you're using watercolor paper, this would actually look cool if you did wet on wet, which is when you wet the paper first and then drop the color. I'm going to pick another color here and now I'm going to go around. Can't really see the difference too much, but it is a different tone. This is a different purple. My, my watercolor set has three different types of purple. So I'm going around that line and that whole section is gonna be that purplish color, which is a pretty purple. It's like a, I don't know, purple pink sort of. You can make purple if you do not have purple in your watercolor set by mixing, that's right, red and blue. I heard some of you say it before I said it. And I'm working today from my art studio inside my house. I have, um, this is the table that I tell you about that I work on a lot. It's got um, butcher paper underneath that I've used for many projects. That's why it's, you see all that paint underneath. It helps protect my table. So whenever you're gonna do art, you should protect your table with something. All right, I'm going to pick another color here. Let's see, this one might be too orange, we'll see. You try this little box. Now, if you do not have watercolors, I'm gonna do another one using um, oil pastels, but you can use crayons instead. So if you see, all of my colors are kind of in the same color range, so they're not, so they kind of work very well together. So now I'm just thinking about what color I want to put in here. Let's try this pink. Ooh, that's a pretty pink. I didn't use that pink anywhere else. And now I've run out of squares. But I, and I like kind of how some colors that are still wet are blurring into another color. 
I really like that pink. I'm gonna just go over this one again with that pink. Make it a little stronger. All right, so now I'm gonna set this one aside and let it dry. And now I'm gonna do another one. Using my oil pastels, but like I said, you can use crayon. So I'm also gonna stick with colors in the color wheel that are kind of close. So hmm, I think this one, I wanna do it like the warm colors, like red, yellow, orange. So if I'm, if you can see my color, we'll have red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, and yellow are in that color um, on the color wheel and they are next to each other. So these are analogous colors. Um, so I'm gonna pull out my orange, my red, and my yellow. Notice I have purple right now, but I'm not gonna go to these cool colors, which are like the purples and the pinks. I'm just gonna stick to these three colors. And because I don't have red orange, I can probably mix it and you can mix those colors as well with your crayons. So I think I'm gonna do all the triangles red. But remember, you don't have to, I wanted you to do an original sketch. So pick a color, I mean, Pick your colors. If you wanna do the warm colors like red, yellow, and orange, pick those out of your crayon box. I wouldn't do these with colored pencils. I would do these with more crayons so that it's more vibrant. Okay, now I'm going to pick my yellow. And I'm gonna randomly, I think I'm gonna pick all of the box, small boxes yellow. So even though there was some randomness to my drawings, I'm gonna try to make it like feel like a, a complete piece because I'm picking the same shapes and I'm coloring the same shapes with that color, with the same color. So take a look at your drawing and see what shapes have the same, which shapes you have that are different, like my triangles or I have a couple triangles. I've decided to paint those, to color those red. I had some squarish, small rectangular boxes. I decided to paint the, to color those yellow. And now I'm gonna pick, paint the larger rectangular boxes orange. And I'm doing this very quickly, but you do not have to rush. I am just doing it quickly so that, um, doesn't take up too much memory because I'm recording this from a phone. That's what I'm doing. I hope all of you are doing well, boys and girls, and that you are helping your mom and dad out at home by doing your chores. And that you are doing your work that your teachers are giving you. And that you are saying your prayers every day. And you're enjoying art. I've been getting such beautiful pictures that your parents and you have been sending me through email and text. I'm enjoying some of the work you're doing at home with your art. See, I decided to continue all these boxes as well in orange. I'm trying to figure out if I wanna do anything in the negative space, if I'm gonna color in the negative space. I'm not sure that I want to do that. I might just leave the other sections white. Now I'm using oil pastels and normally I blend and I smear them, but in this case, because I want it to be more like a crayon, not an oil pastel, I do not want to blend. All right, so I think I could go back and color the in-betweens, um, but I'm gonna leave them white. I wanna leave that negative space white. So I'm done with this one. 
And I'm gonna do one more. And this one I'm gonna go back to um, my watercolors. Let me put my oil pastels back so I don't have a mess. Even though I kind of have a mess right now. All right, so now I'm gonna think of another color scheme. Um, da -da -da, let's see. I think I wanna do blues this time. So I have blues and greens here. Um, so I think I just wanna do lots of blues, not greens. I just wanna do different types of blue. Now you have blue in your um, watercolor set. So what you could do is you could do blue. You can mix um, on your wells and your watercolor set. You can do blue with a little bit of black to make a darker blue. Um, you can add more water to one of your wells so that you can have a lighter blue. It's up to you. I'm gonna just use the different blues that I have here. You can also decide to do a blue purple since you don't have so many blue um, combinations in your set. I'm purposely leaving the other side another color um, open because I want to paint it with another blue. I hope the camera can pick up the, the different variations of blue because sometimes when I take pictures of blue things, I notice that the camera doesn't pick them up well. I don't know why. I'm just randomly picking boxes to paint this different. This is more like an aqua blue, I think. This is like an abstract watercolor, so I'm not taking my time. Um, I'm purposely leaving some gaps. This is another blue. Maybe it looks the same to you, but I can tell from here. Ooh, that's pretty. Don't know if you can see that one. But that was really pretty. This is a different blue. They all have names. I just have the chart somewhere else. So just go ahead and if you decide to go with blue, you can add blue, like I said, and add some water to it and make it um watery blue and then some boxes you can do a lighter blue or a darker blue and some boxes if you you can mix some blue with your black and get like more of a dark blue color actually now i'm going to try to mix on my well one of the blues with a black just to see how it'll come out so just putting some ignore that it says red um, I have, right, I'm going to pick up black. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Like that indigo color. And you know, in class, I've told you that I really love indigo. It's just one of my favorite colors to paint with. So... 
and we have made indigo before with our watercolor set at school. So you should be able to, it's like a denim, like a jean color, you know, like if you're wearing jeans. So you should be able to get and make an indigo with the blue and black. You might have to play around with it a little bit and practice it. There's just so much you could do with watercolors. I think I saw some watercolors on sale um, at Walmart when I was there um, the other day getting groceries. So maybe if your parents are going to the store, like Walmart is the only place I can think of. But if not, you can do this with crayon, like I said, or oil pastel. All right, I'm going back to another type of blue again. that that one is pure blue. It's a pretty blue. It's like a royal blue. I hope everybody's week is going good. And that your family is safe. I'm gonna switch the colors again. This is more like a sky blue. So remember, you're just putting it in different sections. You're not just taking blue and just going like that on the whole thing, no, no, no. You're gonna take your time and try to do a different blue on each little box that you drew. I think I want the next one to be very light blue, so I'm just gonna water it down. This paper is actually holding up pretty well because this is not thick watercolor paper whatsoever. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with all these. So this is what we've done so far. This is the first one. And we have the one that I do with the crayons or our oil pastel and this one. So let's put these to dry and I'll be back in a second. All right, while those are still drying, I'm gonna go back and I decided that I wanna add, I think some darker lines. So I got my black um, oil pastel, but you can take your black crayon and I'm just gonna make these lines a little darker. I just felt like they were just kind of being not seen anymore. I'm just going to outline them. I kind of like the look that they're not perfectly straight or symmetrical, that they're a little bit off center, a little wonky. I kind of like that. They have sort of like a cartoon look to them. I'm taking a class this week by um, a teacher called Mary Beth Shaw and she kind of, um, one of her techniques was doing the watercolor, the geometrics and watercolors and gave me the idea to do this project with you guys. All right, so this is what I have, but now I wanna make some marks and we've talked about mark making before, which is you can just use a pencil, a crayon, just anything, a marker 
to make um, marks on your paper. So I'm going to get a black marker. If I can find one. Give me a second while I look. my marker works yep all right and now I'm just going to draw some random marks I'm gonna make lines this marker is kind of light I think I want to do a darker marker so you're just gonna do random lines okay I can do some lines going up and down, just different marks. I can do some diagonal lines, kind of going at an angle. Back to straight back and forth lines some up and down lines, up to you how you want to make your lines. My marker's getting a little bit messed up because it's touching the oil pastel and then it's kind of clogging the tip. So I have to be careful that I don't touch the wax. Just turning my paper around, making different marks. But the marks that I'm making are kind of like straight lines, okay? Sometimes we've done curvy lines. For this, because I have very linear and straight edges, I want to keep going with that. I didn't want to do any curves. I love to draw circles, but let's just keep these sort of straight edged lines on it. All right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try to get another marker that's a little thicker. Maybe you have a Sharpie at home or hmm, a pencil or just something else that's black that will give you a different thickness of line because this marker that I chose to see the lines are very, very thin. I want, I want thick and thin, so I'm gonna look for another marker. Let's see, I have some Tombow twin tone and these are the Tombow watercolor markers but I think this one's going bad so let me try this these twin tones have two sides so I'm gonna try to do some thicker lines perfect that's what I wanted so I'm gonna kind of go in between my lines now in some places I don't have to do it on all places Remember, boys and girls, to send me your artwork by Fridays at 5, so you can have your parents every Friday or before Friday, but by 5 p.m., not after, if they can email me or text me your finished pieces, I would love that so that I can give you a grade. This is for the TCCA students that are watching this. For other people that are watching it, obviously, <laughs> you are just doing this for fun and it is not for a grade. See, I'm just picking different places. Now I'm gonna just look at the piece and see, I feel like I need some here. Okay. Oh, and I didn't do any down here. So I'm just kind of filling all that negative space, which is the empty space, with some sort of line. All right, I think I'm 
Mm, I was going to say, I think I'm done, but then I saw this little pocket of emptiness right here. All right, now we're done. All right, so we have our three finished pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scissor and a ruler. And this is optional. You can leave them like that and just this could be your final design. But I thought it would be cool to make these into bookmarks. So I'm going to start with this pink piece over here. Taking a sip of my coffee. Hmm. It's kind of yucky right now. It's cold. All right. And let me see. I have a bookmark. I have been making bookmarks lately. Um, so this is one of the bookmarks that I've made. I kind of want to keep this measurement. Um, let's see. Seven by two inches. All right, so I can, I can take a pencil and I don't have space to do seven this way, so I'm gonna do it horizontally. So you take your ruler and put it to the end of your paper and line it up until seven. Make sure it's straight on your paper and you might wanna put a little line there, okay? And then take from the end of the paper and turn the ruler over because you have to see where the two inches are. And that's two inches, okay? So that is as wide as I want it. So I'm gonna kind of do, put it now like this, long wise. Draw a line going down. Okay, that's the line where I'm going to cut. And then I'm going to go back over to this line because this line was the one that me measured that this was seven inches. So I'm going to put it there and draw it down. Okay, so this will give me a bookmark. I can make another one right here and you can give it to your friends if you want or your family actually because unless your friends live with you you can't go visit your friends right now so just give it to your family members or save them for your friends to give it to them when we go back to school all right so now I'm taking from this line and I'm measuring from this line over here two inches again so that I have the right width well Miss Noelle you're putting math in here oh not so much fun told you art and math they go together R and math, okay? And let's see, this is the leftover. How about that? It's about two inches, we can use that. All right, so now we're gonna take our scissor and we're gonna cut on the line. Carefully, try to get a straight line. I'm gonna go cut it all the way across even though this is gonna be not thrown away we don't throw away papers with colors and textures so this is my bookmark okay this is one of the bookmarks let me trim that little doop. okay and what am i going to do with this i don't know but i feel like i can do a collage with this so i'm definitely going to keep this setting it aside in my collage pile okay remember last week's project when you were doing the spirals i told you to keep whatever you didn't use because we will be able to use this in a pro another project. So now I'm going to cut down again. Here I have another one. Bam. Okay. This is the last piece. So now I'm just going to cut a straight across. And if you're a younger student that is um, not in our school, but maybe is watching the video and you need help with scissors, you might have your parents help you with the measurement and the cutting. All right, so this one is a little thicker because this was the end, but it's perfect. All right, so I have one, two, three bookmarks, yay. And three little scraps, which I'm going to put in my scrap pile that I have a little scrap pile, which is like a little, 
You want to see my scrap pile? This is the scrap pile that I have. All sorts of papers and stuff from other projects. I keep that there when I do collages. I use those scraps. I actually have many scrap piles. That's not just my only one. All right. So I have three. Now I can go to my next one and decide, do I want to turn this into bookmarks or not? Yeah, I do. Okay. That's, that was an easy decision. <laughs> So what are we going to do? Let's find the two inch mark for the width of the bookmark. Okay. We can just, once we find the width, we can just go straight now. I think it's faster this way. All right. And then now we need to met. So we're going to cut this with, this is how wide it's going to be but we need to see how long. So now we need to find our seven inches because it's gonna be seven inches long, okay? Now I'm gonna take this like this and just go across because all of them are gonna be seven inches. Okay, that's my first one. Now I have to go from that line to this line and mark the two inches for the width and then flip over the ruler Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut on our lines. My paper's still a little damp. It's usually not good when it's still a little wet because it could tear, so I'm just cutting it carefully. So I'm gonna add this to my collage pile, that's right. And how cool is that? If I was thinking of making these shapes in a bookmark, I wouldn't get it like that. But because I did a random pattern and now I'm cutting them, I'm gonna have some really cool bookmarks. Yes, I'm very excited. Very, very excited. All right, so I have three more scraps for my collage pile and three more bookmarks. So now I have like six little squares here. What am I gonna do with these? I don't know, but they're very fun to touch and look at. I'm happy with them. All right, so my last pile, this is if you did all three colors. I mean, if you did all three sets. If you only did one, that's fine, or if you did two or three, however many you did, okay? And now your paper that you might be using is might be bigger. So you just have to make sure that you're going seven long and two wide. All right, so now let me find, this is the one that I would have done if you didn't have colored, um, if you didn't have watercolors, you would have done it with crayons or oil pastel. So I wanna do that, I wanna show you how that it's gonna look as a bookmark. So I'm gonna mark the two inch wide mark Make sure I don't lose it because I have so many lines going through this piece. This piece has a lot of lines. So it's easy to get lost on that one. Is that my hair touching? Yes. All right, and now I'm gonna go seven inches. Okay, my seven inches are right here. So I'm gonna go all the way across. Just to do, do okay now I'm gonna go to my next bookmark because <clears throat> for my pieces I can make three you might be using longer paper so you might be able to get more than three all right so now I'm gonna cut these out Okay, so here's my first bookmark. I like the abstract shape of it and my first scrap. The 
this is my second bookmark. I have to be careful because I think these are the oil pastels, so they're a little bit smudgy. <clears throat> so if I really wanted to use these with oil pastel, um, I might have to, um, hold on, I lost my line. Hmm. See what I was telling you, boys and girls? Because there's so many lines, I just lost my line. So I wanna make sure I cut the right place. So I'm gonna remeasure, here's the seven inch mark. With oil pastel, like if I wanted to use it, I would have to spray something um, on top so that it doesn't smear anymore. And I have a special spray, um, but I have that at home. It's like a, a protective finish, and when I put it, um, it'll seal it so it doesn't smear. So I might do that with these. But if you're using crayons, it's not going to really smear. All right, so these are our bookmarks that we made. So, if you notice my bookmark, this one is made from different scraps. I have a hole here. So if you have a hole puncher and you have some string and yarn or, or ribbon, you can actually make them a lot nicer um, if you have that. If you don't, this is good enough. Let me get a book and show you how it works. here but yeah. all right pick one of my favorites the lion the witch and the wardrobe okay so how to use a bookmark oh I'm reading this page instead of doing this no we don't want to mess up the book stick our bookmark in and call it a day yay so you could leave the book back the bookmark like that you don't have to add anything to it but if you wanted to embellish it, which make, means make it like prettier and add more designs, you could take Miss Noelle is looking for her stuff. A hole puncher and punch a hole in it. You can punch a hole in the middle or on the side. It's up to you. I'm just gonna punch a hole. You go and then you can take some string I'm gonna look for string um, all my string is somewhere else but I'll use this string that I have okay I'm gonna see how long do I want it okay it's up to you how long you want it Cut it right there. And you can either tie it like this, put the string through the hole. Oops. Like if you're tying a shoelace, tie it. And then tie it again. And you have your um, bookmark string. Or you can do this. This is another way of doing it. You could take it like this. See? This string isn't very good for this. You put it together. You put it through as it's closed. Put it through the hole so that you have it like this. And then you stick the ends into the mouth and pull it. And then you have a bookmark. I can't wait to see how beautiful your bookmarks are going to be. And how lovely would these be if we open our Bibles and we take and we write scriptures on the back of our bookmarks and give them as gifts to our family or make some for our teacher so that when we see our teachers again after the quarantine is over, you can give a bookmark to your teacher. All right, boys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. I enjoyed teaching it. Have a wonderful week.